Okay, so today we're going to look at solving equations that are our special cases. So what exactly would the special cases be then? So then think about to most of the equations that you solve and we get through solving an equation and for the most part we get one number as our answer. We'll get done solving the equation and get x equals 2 or x equals negative 5 or something like that. And that answer is the only thing that's going to satisfy that equation. It's the only number that's going to work. But every once in a while, we see our special cases. Now, what our special cases are, are, well, what happens if we don't just have one answer? What if every single number that we plugged in would work? And believe it or not, we do have that as our, one of our special cases that is called infinitely many solutions or all real numbers. That happens when it doesn't matter what number you plug in, every single number would work for that particular equation. Or we can have the other side of the spectrum where nothing works. It doesn't matter what number we plug in, nothing is going to work. We just can't get that equation to be solved. So we're going to look at these two equations and see if we can figure out which case is which. So starting with the equation on the left-hand side, I see that I have some parentheses, which means we need to start there first. So the first thing we're going to do here is distribute the 4. So I'm going to drop down the right-hand side 4 now. We'll get to that in just a little bit. And we're going to focus on the right-hand side. So 4 times 3 gives us a 12. And 4 times the 2r gives us an 8r. Make sure you drop everything else down. Let's take care of simplifying this thing. Let's clean it up a little bit by combining some like terms. On the left-hand side, we have a set of like terms. On the right-hand side, we do as well. So taking care of that, we have 1r plus 7r gives us 8r. Drop down that plus 9 is equal to... 12 minus 3 is a 9, and drop down the plus 8r. Okay, so then let's see. So what if I, I, okay, so our next step would be to isolate the variable. So I can get the variable on one side, which means doing this here. So I'm going to move the 8r over by subtracting it away. But when we subtract it away, something funny happens. Look at this here. We have 8r and we subtract 8r, so that's going to cancel. But on the right-hand side, 8r minus 8r is also going to cancel, and I get that 9 equals 9, which is kind of a weird answer. 9 does equal 9, but... I mean, I don't have an x equals something. This is just a little too weird. And I know if I was a student and I was taking a look at this, I would just probably be thinking, okay, I must have done something wrong. I need to go back up here or maybe go a step above and instead of subtracting the 8r, let's try and do something else. What if I got rid of the number first? So what if I subtract a 9 on either side? Well, if I do that, well, 9 minus 9 cancels. 9 minus 9 cancels. I'm left with 8r equals 8r. And if I divide out the coefficient, those cancel as well, and we're left with r equals r. Well, okay. So either way I solve it, I get 9 equals 9 or r equals r. This is what an infinitely many solutions problem looks like, or all real numbers. What that means is this is our case where anything we can think of to plug in would work. Every single number would be a solution to this equation. 9 does equal a 9. R does equal an R. So it is true. It looks a little bit different, but that is why it's one of the special cases. So anytime you see this situation right here where you have a number equal to that same number, or R equals R, X equals, equals X, just know that this is the all real numbers. So then let's take a look at this problem on the right-hand side and see what's going on with that one. Once again, I do see that I have parentheses, which means the distributive property. So distributing over here on the left-hand side, let's distribute that 3. That would give us 3m plus 15. And let's drop down that minus 1 plus the 2m, and let's distribute that right-hand side. Taking care of that would give us 5m plus 10. 
Okay, so let's clean this up a little bit as well. So let's combine some like terms. So on the left hand side, let's see, we have 3m and 2m. And then we also have the 15 minus the 1. So let's go ahead and take care of that. 3m plus 2m gives us 5m. And 15 minus 1 gives us a 14. And that equals the right hand side. Let's just drop that down. 5m plus 10. Okay, so let's isolate the variable, get the variable on one side, so I'm going to subtract 5m from either side. On the left hand side, we're going to see that that's going to cancel, but on the right hand side, it's going to cancel as well, leaving me with 14 is equal to 10. Ah, something looks funny once again, okay, so going back up just to make sure here, I'm going to go back up a step, and maybe let's try subtracting the 14 on either side and taking care of that. Well, 14 minus 14 is 0, 10 minus 14 is a negative 4, so when I drop down the 5m, so let's see, 5m equals this 5m minus the 14, okay, well I can subtract 5m on either side now, okay, on the left hand side, well 5m minus 5m is 0, on the right hand side, 5m minus 5m is 0 as well, but I still have that negative 4 hanging out, so here I would get a 0 minus a negative 4, which still doesn't make sense. So regardless, either way here, I got 14 equals 10, or 0 equals negative 4. I'm getting something that just does not make any sense. 14 definitely does not equal 10. 0 does not equal negative 4. This is an example of what a no solution looks like. Just does not matter what we do. We are not going to get an answer for this one here. So this is what our no solutions would look like.